forget that it is you as an individual who adds to the collective numbers. And when one person again stays away in our constituency saying it's only myself, uh, another one is reasoning the same way and eventually we find ourselves that we don't have the numbers. And it's unfortunate, last week uh, I have to report here, Your Excellency, on Thursday afternoon, uh, the other side were more than us in the House. In fact, at one point, the leader of minority approached me to close debate on the affordable housing bill. Of course, knowing that if we closed at that point, they had the numbers. Uh, but we should be able to conclude that business tomorrow. Hopefully, on Wednesday afternoon, we get into third reading. Again, during third reading, we will be asking all of you to be present so that we are able to conclude with that debate and be able to uh, uh, process the bill forward to the Senate so that they're able to advertise it uh, by Friday, do their public participation, and we get a new affordable housing bill uh, before the next payroll. Uh, and usually many corporations, both private and public, pay, uh, process their payrolls after the 15th of the month. So we hope by the 15th of March, Your Excellency, you will have processed, the, uh, you will have assented to the new affordable housing bill. We also have regulations. I know CS Nakumisha has been working very hard, taking the health laws regulations through public participation, and we expect that it will also be coming before the House, uh, both houses this time. We also have a number of bills that are in the Senate, especially touching on agriculture, critical bills, and I know the Honorable Aaron Cheruyoti will be speaking to some of those. Your Excellency, in conclusion, let me take this opportunity to also thank members of our cabinet who have been very diligent. I know there are many cabinet secretaries who have not had time to come before the House with the amended standing orders to answer to questions and statements. At times, because many of the questions that will be processed uh, will touch on a few critical areas, energy, uh, education. I know CS Machogo has been there quite a number of times. Um, uh, roads, and uh, of course, uh, uh, security. I know CS Kindiki has also been there quite a number of times. Uh, there also have been issues to do with human wildlife conflict and those, um, the ministers in charge of tourism have also had an opportunity. There are many others who have not had an opportunity. We are making efforts to make sure that you find an opportunity. I will not encourage you to go the Margaret Thatcher regime way, where there was uh, a scandal that was called cash for questions, where cabinet secretaries would pay members of uh, the House of Representatives to ask questions uh, so that you may be able to come and answer them. But we, in the leadership, will make sure that whenever there is a question that touches on any of your departments for those cabinet secretaries who have not had the opportunity to appear before the House, to be able to prioritize those particular uh, ministries to come before the House. Lastly, is to request our cabinet secretaries, every time you find an opportunity to come and answer to a question or to a statement uh, requested by a member of parliament, please take that time as also an opportunity to espouse on government policy. And uh, maybe for instance, uh, I, know, uh, I don't know, CS Elio Dowalo has not been there, for instance. Uh, if you get an opportunity uh, to answer to a question, take that opportunity to also challenge us as members of parliament to also be a bit uh, quick in pushing through government agenda, especially something like the ICT hubs. It's a perfect opportunity to come and speak to members of parliament and to the country because you have almost a whole hour on uh, TV free of charge. So it's a very good opportunity to also use that to espouse on government policy and push our agenda and market our agenda to the people of Kenya. Uh, and I hope many of you who have that opportunity this year will make use of uh, that time in the House. It doesn't harm to talk to us uh, to generate questions uh, on your behalf. If there's something <laughs> that you want to come and speak to, uh, if there's something on mining, and CS Mvuria, you have not seen anybody asking a question, if you talk to me, I can get a member of parliament to generate a question that will offer you an opportunity to come and espouse on what you want to do <laughs> on the agenda of mining. Si swali ni swali. Na kwenye inatoka, si ohoja, bora, ni ujumbe, ifikie, kwenye inafaa kufikia. 
and by speaking to members of parliament from the floor of the house, you will also have an opportunity to speak to the country uh, at a prime time when uh, many Kenyans are watching. And I'm happy uh, cabinet secretaries like uh, the Honorable Kipchumba Murkomen has uh, done very well in taking advantage of even very difficult questions. I remember when there was a question on the allocation of resources to roads and CS Murkomen was able to turn around the question and put it back to parliament itself. And uh, I remember when he left the house, uh, those of us who are members of the Budget Committee and uh, the Roads Committee were pleading with Honorable Murkomen to please not appear back in the House. On the Kamukunji, he promised that he would even want an opportunity to have a Kamukunji with members of Parliament. So I want to encourage other Cabinet Secretaries, please take time, uh, CS uh, Florence, um, on the uh, jobs uh, in the diaspora and uh, uh, other opportunities, CSOALO on the online jobs uh, through the ICT hubs uh, to use the floor of the house to be able to market what we are doing as a government. Uh, Your Excellency, I know there are also some touchy issues that you'll be speaking to, issues that touch on um, our conduct also as members of parliament, our participation in the house, how as members of parliament who are on the government side ought to carry ourselves on in the house and even outside the house. We've had a number of challenges, a few of them, where for instance, and this is the best case example, Your Excellency, we have delays in disbursement of NGCDF. Um, and you remember the no, no CDF? It was no CDF, no what? No parliament. <laughs> uh, and I, Your Excellency, I will often find myself on the receiving end, <laughs> being the leader of the house and being the person who ought to be representing the cabinet secretary when he's not there. And you can imagine the situation I find myself in when we have our own members who are leading in the process of no CDF, <laughs> no parliament, <laughs> and they're behind me. And across, on the other side of the floor, there is a whole <laughs> brigade of our colleagues from the minority side in the same chorus. So we need to socialize ourselves now that uh, there is no other government other than ourselves. On the floor of parliament, there is no government. It is us who are government on the floor of the house. And therefore, even when there is an agenda that... Um, is not uh, pro-government per se, or where we think government in a way has slackened uh, uh, possibly, and I gave the case example of NGCDF because it also touches on me. And you see the way I also struggle when I'm speaking to say I don't speak for any cabinet secretary, including Professor Ndungu. I speak as a representative of the people of Kikuyu today on NGCDF. Uh, but we do so with caution so that we also do not in any way inside the house, not to carry on with business. A case example, members are signing signatures to impeach a cabinet secretary on account of non-disbursement of NGCDF. And you find a member of Kenya Kwanzaa <laughs> signing <laughs> to impeach a cabinet secretary on non-disbursement of NGCDF. <laughs> and it is within our right but I just want to say, Your Excellency and Honorable Members, it is in our right to oversight these cabinet secretaries, but also to appreciate that all the challenges that we face as a country and as a government, there are no other leaders that we are looking up to to resolve those challenges. We must be part of the solution. And I know we have had challenges with the uh, exchequer releases. We have uh, really harassed uh, CS uh, Ndungu and PS Kipto on NGCDF. But I just pleading for some understanding. In fact, Your Excellency, I was engaging a number of us, a number of chairs of committees, and reminding ourselves last year, which was the second session after the elections. And when, just before we did our first budget, 
we will all remember the first NGCDF disbursement was done at the end of February, the very first one. And by June 30th, Your Excellency, 100% of our NGCDF disbursement had been done for the first time since I joined Parliament in 2013. It was the first time that we had NGCDF being disbursed 100%. This time, we have had the same challenge as Your Excellency. The first disbursement of NGCDF uh, uh, was done early January, uh, 10 billion shillings, and the CS National Treasury has committed to a disbursement of 10 billion shillings every month to ensure that by the end of the financial year again, we have 100% uh, disbursement of NGCDF. So it is that kind of understanding that I want to plead with all of us because we know the challenges, Your Excellency, you've had with the uh, uh, debt repayment. I know uh, there is some very bright light at the end of the tunnel now with the uh, opportunities that come with the uh, resolution of the issues to do the, the euro bond and uh, a lot of uh, receipts coming from our development partners. Uh, the exchequer releases will be more uh, efficient than they have been. And these challenges, Your Excellency, are not just in Parliament, and that's why I thought it was fair that I raise this matter here, because I know these members of Parliament also have a lot of pressure, uh, including myself, from our constituents, when NGCDF uh, disbursements are late and uh, children are waiting for uh, bursaries. But we must also not forget that the first uh, disbursements that were done, I think, uh, to the Ministry of Education touched on capitation to our schools and without the capitation you can imagine the situation would only get worse and therefore it's more important uh, even as we fight for our disbursements for NGCDF to also be cognizant of all the other competing challenges and I say this because I have been chair of the budget and appropriations committee in the last parliament and I'm certain if uh, Honorable Dindi Nyoro stood here on Honorable Kimani Kuria our chair of finance uh, they would tell members the same because they have a view of the situation as it is in the country. Your Excellency, with those very many remarks, uh, allow me to now invite uh, our leader of uh, majority in the Senate to give his brief remarks, then invite our Deputy President for his opening remarks. Thank you and God bless you and wish you all a good engagement throughout the day and for the Cabinet who will be here for another two days. All the best in your engagements. Thank you. Thank you, Kimani, Your Excellency, the President and the leader of our party, the Deputy President of the Republic, uh, colleague legislators, members of the uh, Cabinet, and I guess everyone who's here, I greet you all. Good morning. Good morning once again. Well, uh, I never tire, Your Excellency, to say how much it's a privilege for us to come together, especially uh, those of us that are in Parliament and uh, we know the journey that we have walked to get this opportunity to interact and reflect on our journey this far, share what our views are, the challenges that we are facing, and how we can forge ahead to achieve the objectives that we set out for ourselves when we went out and spoke to the people of Kenya. Therefore, Your Excellency, allow me to appreciate uh, this opportunity on behalf of the members of the Senate uh, to interact with you and the members of the executive uh, to share ideas and also just give an update of our work in Parliament, uh, what is before us, uh, the challenges that we're experiencing, and then forge ahead uh, together as one united uh, team. At the Senate, uh, Your Excellency, we have had also a busy season the last few months just before we went on recess. If you'll recall, members, actually, it was on account of business before the Senate that we had to stop the last PG, and we had interacted and reached a point where members were just about to make their remarks on uh, various issues. But then because of the pending legislative work that was before us, uh, we stopped and agreed to reconvene again. We are glad to be back here. At the Senate, Your Excellency, we have considered quite a significant uh, number of bills that are key to the promises that we made to the people. And I want to take this earliest opportunity to appreciate the members of uh, our side of the House who have all 
been extremely supportive and at the times when we needed them, at least 90 to 99% have showed up and voted with us. It's not a very easy experience. And uh, I say this knowing that perhaps very few people understand uh, that remark. Perhaps only those that uh, have served in the Senate understand the difficulty of raising the magical 24. It's never an easy business. Uh, and I want to appreciate that this present term of the Senate, uh, members have been extremely supportive in passing business that has been forwarded to us. Uh, quickly, Your Excellency, in the interest of time, I will mention that uh, we are anxiously awaiting the housing bill, which uh, the Honorable Lichungo has spoken about. Once our colleagues in the Assembly uh, conclude on it, we will definitely consider it. Uh, chances are we have our slight different views on one or two issues, but as you know, we have been quite uh, fast at agreeing and closing ranks every time us and the Assembly have a different view to on any particular matter. In fact, uh, I'm glad to report and I appreciate our colleagues in the Assembly as well that the two or three bills that have gone through a mediation process this term, within the first meeting, we were able to close ranks and agree, meaning those from the Assembly were able to see uh, things from our perspective as Senate and us were able to understand you as our colleagues from the Assembly. It's not very usual. Uh, the last two terms of Parliament, uh, that never used to happen. In fact, it used to be, the meetings actually used to break down, Your Excellency, on account of who chairs. Eh? You sit down and you have the team from the Assembly, the team from the Senate. Just to agree on who leads the meeting will break that mediation process. But I'm glad and happy to report that uh, we have come out of age as an institution and are now focused on the things uh, that matter. Of course, we have quite a heavy program, but there are about two or three or four bills maximum that I just want to uh, report, uh, Your Excellency, that we shall be giving uh, priority in the next few, maybe two or three uh, weeks to conclude on because of how key and integral they are to many of the plans uh, that we have as an administration. The food and feed safety uh, bill that is presently before our agriculture committee is in second reading, uh, Your Excellency. And in, by the end of this week that you're beginning, we should be able to conclude on its third reading because the report has been tabled and our committees uh, have proposed their amendments uh, uh, to what you had done in the assembly, uh, Moshimo Ichungwa. So I believe we should be able to close uh, rank on that particular issue. We have a controversial bill that began its uh, legislative process last week, the water amendment bill. And um, while at this, I say to my colleague senators last week, and allow me to repeat it here, Your Excellency, that uh, those that have served in Senate, uh, Professor Kindiki, our first majority leader, you know that the easiest way that opposition can defeat a government bill, so to speak, in Senate is to declare it that this is anti-devolution. You are rolling back the gains. And without knowing, many a times people join into the chorus. And I have endeavored to remind my colleague senators that at least in the time that I have served as majority leader, I have never received a call from His Excellency, the President or his deputy, asking me that you must insist on a bill to come in a particular way. On many occasions, even when he has called to find out why did you guys uh, change this particular provision, he has agreed with our wisdom as Senate. It is within our powers as a legislature to change whatever bill or proposal that has come from the office of the AG. Therefore, each time we consider a government bill, and I'm sure by now everybody knows what a government bill is, it is within your right to pass any amendment. But what I perhaps take a great exception to is us sometimes appreciating and agreeing to a chorus that our colleagues from the minority side uh, love initiating and sometimes we unwittingly uh, join and say that, uh, in fact, if we th pass this particular bill, uh, we'll have either rolled back the gains or uh, this or the other. It is important to declare, and I declare this in your sitting, Your Excellency, that at no particular time have you insisted that Parliament needs to transact their job in any particular way. You have given us uh, the freedom to think and appreciate things, especially us from the Senate. On many occasions, we don't agree with our colleagues in the Assembly. And I want to tell my membership that if you bring an amendment, and for sure you can convince the rest of us all that that secures our mandate, it places counties at the forefront on many of these issues, 
be assured of our support from I as your leader of the majority and the leadership of the House so that we can all progress together. That is just a pitch to propose and request our colleagues that let us maintain the 100% record that we have. There is no government bill that has come to the Senate and has been defeated on any account. We amend, that is within our mandate and that's our business. So I expect that on this water amendment bill, and Your Excellency, you know this is a bill that allows us to keep the promise that we made on the various uh, water institutes that are in our counties, allowing them to enter into PPP agreements. Because as an administration, and Moshimo Chungwa has spoken to this, you know very well that we don't have sufficient resources to roll out water programs in all our counties. And the thinking that has come from the executive, which we are at liberty to make a determination and make it better perhaps so that it looks good and uh, is in sync with our constitution, especially uh, appreciating the two levels of government, should be to support this dream and this thinking that um, we are able to run county programs, oh, uh, water uh, programs using the PPP framework. Finally, Your Excellency, are the three agriculture bills that Mwishmo Echungwa mentioned. The one on coffee that we want to streamline and ensure that coffee has its own agency, just like we did for tea. There's an amendment on the tea bill as well that was done in 2020. His Excellency, the Deputy President, knows the number of meetings he has chaired and the proposals that you gave us when we had the meeting you chaired in Kericho. We are almost concluding on that bill. And on sugar, uh, there's a lot that you're doing in the sugar industry, uh, Your Excellency. Our committee has agreed with virtually everything that the Assembly did, save for the zoning part. We, we have challenges. We appreciate and we agree with you that it is important to do zoning so that we can foster privatization. But uh, the zoning formula that our colleagues in the Assembly took, we hold a slightly different view. We agree with the zoning that was proposed in the um, task force report that was done in the year 2020. And that's what we shall be proposing. Then, of course, we'll conclude. Uh, finally, Your Excellencies, uh, you know that little assignment that you gave us uh, between the leader of majority in the assembly and myself on the national dialogue. We begin that conversation today. It is important you make mention uh, of that uh, very difficult exercise that you gave us because the report begins a journey tomorrow in the Senate. At 2.30, we shall begin debate. Uh, there are many things uh, that are beneficial to us in that particular report. Therefore, I'm pitching to you that perhaps you help my members who have uh, a very radical view on that particular uh, report to support and uh, we pass it so that we do uh, other, other things. Of course, the BPS is here. Uh, we know that as a Senate, we, have, um, we don't have an exclusive role on this budget-making process, Your Excellency, but because we are leaders, we have an opinion also. And there's something that I'd wish to share, on that uh, a concern that senators have, which uh, we would wish to make as a request to you as a leader of the executive and as our colleagues in the assembly as well. If you look at our counties, Your Excellency, because of the, many of them borrow their budgeting framework from what is done in the executive. And there is a, we have done well in managing this economy despite all the difficult challenges that we've had. But, Your Excellency, there's something that we, we, we can improve and we should uh, as a team. When doing our budgets, including the BPS that has been laid, the business of uh, setting extremely high revenue projections and budgeting on it leaves us with pending bills in our counties and it is on account of it, uh, Your Excellency, that we have the debt crisis that we currently continue to face. I'd wish to request, Your Excellency, that let us be realistic in our budgeting. There is no harm, I and I believe many of the leaders that are here have no difficulty explaining to our constituents sometimes why certain projects will have to delay because you have led the country in appreciating that we can manage our economy more prudently than we have done in the past. On account of that exercise, how the executive have done it at the national level, our counties have borrowed in. Many of our counties, they are projecting, uh, what is it called, on source revenue of a billion shillings for a county that the last financial year collected 100 million. Then they issue jobs of 900 million. What do you have? People that are despondent, they have jobs, they have done, but they cannot be paid because that money is not there. That practice, they borrowed it from us in parliament and at the county. 
Unfortunately, as Senate, we don't have a say in that matter. But because we are leaders, we'd wish to plead with you, the executive, and our colleagues in the National Assembly that as you consider this year's BPS, build your budget at least on, if it is a revenue projected growth, let us be realistic. A maximum, our revenue growth doesn't go beyond 10% uh, in a financial year. What is the wisdom? Uh, forgive me, but I felt it is important uh, for me to pass that point on on behalf of, of, uh, of, of senators. Therefore, with those very many remarks, uh, colleague senators, allow me to uh, take this opportunity to invite the truthful man. You know, Your Excellency, as you were walking, I was reminding, for those of us that used to come to this hotel for Tanga Tanga meetings, I was reminding His Excellency, the Deputy President, that uh, his stint at being a truthful man did not begin when he became Deputy President. One evening we came here for a PG meeting. And there was, it was those times where we used to have colleagues who would show up for Tanga Tanga today, the next weekend they show up in Kelewek. The DP stood in the meeting and caused chaos like you have never seen. There was one particular man, I'll not mention his name, because he's a friend to many of us. And the DP said, so long as this man is here, this meeting is not going to start. And we had a standoff for one hour. Uh, fortunately, that man pleaded. He never listened to you, and in the subsequent elections he lost. I wish he had listened to the truthful man. Today he'd be here in this PG. With those remarks, allow me to welcome our Deputy President, His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa. A round of applause, please. Uh, thank you very much, Your Excellency, our President, Dr. William Ruto, the leadership of the House, our Cabinet Secretaries, our principal secretaries and everybody present, good morning. God is good. And all the time. On behalf of our president, let me take this opportunity to welcome all of you to this meeting, a joint meeting between the executive and our legislators from our side of the coalition. A meeting of minds to chart the way forward. Because as the president has aptly put it, this is a year. Uh, we have this year, 2024 and 2025, to work for the people of Kenya and fulfill our five-year mandate with the people. Starting 2026, anything that we do is perceived as politics and as a strategy to look for votes. So this great meeting that the president convened and insisted that we need to engage with our leaders in both houses so that we are all speaking the same language. Your Excellency, let me thank you once more for always having time to engage with elected leaders. It is your philosophy that elected leaders are very important and you cannot get far without their input. And that is why when the executive literate was convened, you insisted that the legislature should be here so that we discuss and not talk in this, the same language. Before I invite the president, I just had two things that I wanted to say. One, I want to thank our members in both houses for the support and the commitment in making sure that our legislative agenda carries the day in parliament. And uh, I want to say that we'll continue to engage all the time so that we are all looking at things the same way because we serve the people of Kenya and we all belong to the same administration. Secondly, I want to ask our cabinet secretaries and principal secretaries to replicate what the president and I do when we are going out there. Anytime the president is going to a county, the planning is done together with elected leaders, especially side of the people who support the government. We want to ask our cabinet secretaries and the principal secretaries when you have some programs in a certain county, please talk to the elected leaders. Let them not uh, let them not hear that you are there from some posters that have been posted or they are hearing from the media. It is not right. It is not respectful.
even where you are going and you have been invited by governors, you are in the national government. And these are the people we work together in the national government. Let us involve them. And if the president has time to engage them, I have time to engage them. You should also have time to engage them. And I also want to plead with our CSS and our PSS, don't relegate consultation of elected leaders to your personal assistance. Do it personally. Because we do so ourselves. When we are going out, the president creates a day to engage with leaders from that region, understand the issues, agree on the program, and everything is very seamless. I do the same. So let us from here have time to talk to elected leaders because it is the, it is the right thing uh, to do. Again, we also want to ask the leadership of parliament to also consider, much as you have the role to oversight government and call our ministers to parliament, sometimes it becomes very difficult for us to work because our ministers are perpetually in the house in different committees. I think Your Excellency will request a meeting with the leadership so that we agree on how to balance between ministers appearing in parliament to answer questions and also be available to serve. Because sometimes even we have cabinet committees, we are not able to prosecute our agenda because ministers are in and out of parliament. But I believe with some engagement with the leadership, we can agree on an acceptable way where we allow ministers to function at the same time they appear before uh, uh, parliament. Finally, uh, on the National Government uh, Constitution Development Fund, our members, you know for sure, and it's not a secret, that our courts wanted to do away with this fund. But our president, having been a member of parliament, appreciating the importance of that fund, in his magnanimity, fought very hard to ensure that this fund stays. And it was the right decision because this fund is a fund that is felt. Because one, is only 6% that goes to recurrent. Everything else goes to development. So when the government led by our president has a few challenges in terms of availability of exchequer because of the challenges of revenue collection, we also want to ask our members Likewise, to extend the same magnanimity when the parliament is taking a decision on how to react when money is not available on time. I have sat with the president many times and I want to confirm to you that he is on the neck of Professor Dongo and P.S. Kipto to release money to members of parliament through the fund. And he is very clear that it should always be given a priority. So, so some of us who sit with him making those decisions, when we see you joining the other side of the house in a way that is a bit demoralizing, we feel a little bit low. So I want to ask you kindly to be magnanimous, to appreciate the challenges that we face as a country, and to know that the president from where he sits is your number one supporter in terms of having funds to uh, implement your mandate. I think with that understanding, it will help the situation as we move on. Finally, before I call you, Your Excellency, to address these great people, let me ask everybody here, the executive and the legislature, let us focus on helping the president to succeed. I am persuaded from where I sit that that is the most important thing in the next two years. Those of us who campaigned for President William Ruto give the people of Kenya hope and assurance that you transform this country and their lives. We therefore have a duty to make sure that President William Ruto and his administration must succeed. Let us spend time and focus in activities and programs to make sure
that the president honors his mandate with the people of Kenya. Other things can wait for 2026, but 2024, 2025, we must all be united and must focus to do whatever it takes to make sure that the president delivers to the people of Kenya. Finally, Your Excellency, I had somebody saying that you should not look at the rear mirror. I want to encourage you to continue looking at the rear mirror because the inventor of the motor vehicle was not mad by putting the rear mirror. In your leadership, Your Excellency, you have made it very clear that no Kenyan should be left behind. So you must continuously continue looking at the rear mirror to make sure that all Kenyans are on board and they are not left behind. Again, Your Excellency, there are also people who would want to derail your vehicle. There are those who like to puncture the rear wheels. There are those who like to remove goods from your pickup behind. You must continuously look at the rear mirror and the side mirrors so that anybody who may want to derail your vehicle, you are ahead. And again, Your Excellency, your pace is too fast for those of us who help you, myself and these cabinet secretaries. Sometimes you are too fast, you leave us behind. So continue looking. So when you find your deputy is being left behind, you urge him to come to catch up with you and the rest to catch up with you so that this country can move forward. With those few remarks, let me request you to be upstanding and help me to usher in our leader, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Makofi. Um, Mr. Deputy President, leaders of uh, majority National Assembly and Senate, cabinet uh, secretaries uh, present, senators, members of parliament, good morning. I'm Jambo. Let me take this opportunity to welcome all of us to this uh, uh, retreat of both the executive and uh, our members of the legislature. Karibuni sana to Naivasha. I came last evening. I thought we were going to have a bonfire, but I found very many of you had already, I think you had other assignments. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, but um, I want to say this is a very important uh, retreat. It is the first retreat we are having combining both the members of uh, the executive ministers and the uh, cabinet secretaries and the principal secretaries together with our members of parliament. Last year, we had a similar retreat, but it was just for the executive. But we later had an engagement with different committees. So welcome to this uh, very important occasion. And going into the future, we are going to have at least every year a meeting like this. And so that we can together look at where we are, where we need to go, and how we get there. I must say from the beginning that I am a very proud leader of this team. Um, the last one year has seen us do very many things. And it has not happened because of myself and my deputy, or with the ministers alone, or with the members of parliament alone. We've done this together. And I want to appreciate the input, the contribution of each and every one of us to the place where we are today. I want to remind you 
friends, that we have a historic opportunity to change our country. Many of you may not appreciate, because some of us are first timers, and others do not have as much experience. I am among now the, the oldest uh, people around here in terms of being around uh, politics and leadership. I want to tell you from where I sit, we have a moment in history to unlock the potential that Kenya has always had and to take this country to the next level. I want to urge you that let us not waste this moment. It is a moment when we have a manifesto that I believe, if implemented, and when implemented, it can transform Kenya. We have the numbers, both in the Senate and in the National Assembly, to assist us to change Kenya. I want to urge you, I know there is always a temptation to do what politicians do, and that is to focus at the next election. I want to urge you, let's do what leaders would do. Let's focus at the transformation of our country and let us focus at what contribution we can make to change the destiny of our country by focusing on the next generation. We are where we are today as a country because we have always made politically correct, convenient decisions. And the transformation of a country requires men and women who have the metal to confront situations and to look at what is right, not what is popular or what is convenient. I promised you that uh, I will lead from the front. And I will lead from the front so that we can change Kenya. When I said I am a man on a, on a mission, I meant it. We, we have to change Kenya. We have to change Kenya. And uh, if you had any doubt that Kenya is going to change, I want to tell you that um, you just need to be patient and, and watch this space. Kenya is going to change. I am very confident. I know sometimes uh, many, some of us dis get discouraged, some of us get anxious, some of us panic because of exigencies of moments. I want to tell you that uh, we are we are going to take Kenya to where we've always wanted Kenya to be. Many people across the globe believe in Kenya. We must not be the ones who do not believe in our country. There are many people who, are, who have confidence in Kenya. I have been to many fora where Kenya is held in very high esteem. 
we must not be the ones to undermine our own country. Um, so let me persuade you, uh, leaders, that we need to hem in, to forge together, to think about how we can succeed together. When we, 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 we fashioned our manifesto, we were very clear about where we wanted to take Kenya. We were very clear about how to deliver on jobs. We were very clear on how we, want, we wanted to deliver on health. We were very clear on how we wanted to deliver on food security. And we went out to the people, and the people gave us, gave us the mandate against a very difficult political terrain. We must not let them down. We must stay focused and deliver on this commitment. Let me just tell you a couple of things because this meeting is a meeting that uh, is a continuation of the PG we had. So I don't want to prolong what I have to say. I also want to listen to what others have to say. And it is good that today we also have our CSS and PSS so that we can, we can have a, co a convergence of thinking. <clears throat> We will need to collectively, you know, and, and I like what Ishunga said, there is no other government in parliament, it is our members of parliament. You are the government, so don't stop, stop pointing at some government. <laughs> there is no other government. You are the government. Yes, you are the government. So don't imagine that there is another government I don't know where. We all went to the elections. We campaigned on the same podium. You heard me talk about housing. You heard me talk about uh, universal health coverage. When it comes to implementation, Sasa what <laughs> this is how it's going to happen. You know, when the rubber meets the road, don't, don't start to <laughs> We stay the course. Um, let me just point to you some of the things that I think we should, we should be coming as we, as we progress. We brought proposals on many of the aspects that would go to implementing our plan. And I want to appreciate that Parliament has been instrumental in making sure that the proposals that have come from the executive, from the ministers and principal secretaries as they tailor the programs that are necessary for us to implement the plan and proposing budgets for it. Parliament have done their bit, making sure that there are resources that are allocated for us to be able to implement uh, the plan. One of the big successes that we have had is on uh, matters food security. I think it is a, is, a, is a big issue. We had a situation where we had a crisis, and the crisis was not limited to Kenya. The, climate, the crisis was global because of what happened with conflicts around the globe because of matters of climate change because of the drought. We had a very, uh, uh, we, we had a crisis in our hands. <clears throat> By God's grace, we, we got rain. We had a good plan. You people allocated money for fertilizer. 
the Ministry of Agriculture and all the other agencies helped in making sure that that fertilizer got where we want, where we wanted, and I can report to you that today we have a better harvest than we have ever had in the last five years. <clears throat> and we have today also upped our plan for next year to increase fertilizer that is available. I want to ask all of us here as leaders to look out, you know, you as members of parliament, look out, make sure that you work with the ministry to uh, make sure that uh, your constituents, your regions, your areas have access to subsidized fertilizer. We have standardized the cost of fertilizer as 2,500 for all fertilizers. Speak to Medical Inturi, speak to his peers, speak to the serious people, speak to all those, and make sure that they do what they must, coordinate with them so that you can get um, uh, the right farm inputs in your areas. We are proposing to expand the coffee uh, cherry fund. Again, in the supplementary estimates, we will be coming to Parliament to ask for some allocations. We are working on with Treasury on how that can be facilitated because um, coffee has had a very difficult time with the cartels and all the other characters in there, but I think it is taking a turn in the right direction. So we will be working with you to make sure that uh, we, we settle that. Same thing to do with the tea and uh, all the legislations that are uh, on the pipeline and also in the sugar sector. We have uh, uh, just disbursed the first uh, 1.7 billion in the sugar sector. We are working on the reforms in that, uh, in, that, in that sector. And hopefully in a couple of months, we will be able to have a new space for our sugar industry to flourish again. Also, as you have heard me commit, we are working with the KCC. We will be coming to Parliament for another allocation of maybe about a billion shillings just to make sure that our milk producers are paid on time. Uh, we have made a decision together with the stakeholders. I had a long meeting with them in Nakuru, the milk processors. We have agreed that from 1st of March we are going to pay milk farmers 50 shillings per litre and we have also said that it will be paid on time. We are also working so that from the 1st of July like happens elsewhere in the world, that farmers are paid every 15 days. Because those farmers who are doing commercial dairy deploy a lot of uh, capital. So they need money regularly. So we are, we are working with the industry so that we, we, can, we, can, we can deal with that. We are also working with uh, development partners to enhance the capacity of our processors so that we can restructure our milk delivery so that we concentrate on two areas. We concentrate on supplying the, uh, uh, the, the lower market and we have a big opportunity for export. It is, it, it is a very positive thing that actually 
our milk products, the premium milk products, have markets globally, including in the US. So we, we have an opportunity to reconfigure uh, that space, and we are working with the milk processors in that, in that corner. We also will be coming to Parliament to ask you to, um, because we are working with some uh, development partners, to see how we can resource the Agricultural Finance Corporation to give it more leverage to be able to support our farmers with affordable credit. Um, I want to congratulate uh, all of us that we have now the four pieces of legislation to underpin uh, our universal health coverage. Congratulations to everybody. I know the ministry and the, the committee in parliament and parliament itself, you have done a phenomenal job and uh, I very sincerely appreciate. We are now working on the regulations and uh, we want to see whether we can conclude this. I don't know, Susan. Um, I don't know if Susan is here. Okay. Uh, when do you think the regulations will be done, Van Pierce? When, when do you intend to table them in Parliament? So within 15 days or 10 days? 10 days. So um, the committee, the chair of the committee, health committee in Parliament, I don't know, Mr. Bu Dr. Bukose and uh, my good brother there, uh, Pato. So please coordinate because uh, those are very important instruments for us to be able to roll out uh, the universal health coverage. <clears throat> delegated, delegated uh, oh, it is delegated uh, legislation. Okay. Mashimiwa, uh, more fire there, and uh, Chep Konga, and uh, my good friend. Uh, so please, uh, let's see how we can accelerate that because we made a commitment that uh, the people, indigents, we were, we're going to pay for indigents, the people who cannot afford, and then we are going to uh, adjust the contribution framework so that uh, everybody pays a commensurate or uh, a proportional of, uh, of, 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 their, of their incomes. <clears throat> Let me also tell you uh, that um, we were elected on a platform of creating jobs. It is important. And, and I have always made the argument that if we are spending and you in Parliament are the people who allocate money. We are spending 630, 650 billion every year for the education of our children. From nursery school to university. It will be irresponsible for us not to think about when these young people come out of university, college, and school, what happens to them? And that is why, for the first time, we have programs, deliberate, intentional, on creating jobs. It has never happened. You know, we keep talking, oh, you know, we want to grow the economy so that it creates jobs. But you see, it is possible for the economy to grow but for there to be no jobs, unless it is done deliberately. And it is the reason why we intentionally put housing as one of the programs for us to deliver the transformation of Kenya and also create jobs. I don't think there is anybody who needs any persuasion anymore on housing. Do we still have anybody who still has any doubt? Surely. You have seen, for the, for the places where the housing program has started, 
including my friend Simon Kingara in Ruiru. There is already a difference. It is reported by the media, the media who has always problems with us, that crime in Ruiru has gone down because of the program we have. In, 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 eh? So, you know, so, so there is a whole ecosystem of positive uh, vibe when we implement the housing program. It will create jobs for us. I want to tell you, members, as we talk today, and uh, uh, Alice and Hinga are here, we have close to 130,000 people working in the housing program who were not working last year. That's what it is. Our plan is that by the end of this year, we will have a minimum of 300,000 young people working in our housing program. And it will continue to grow. So it is as deliberate as that. Do not, um, I, I, I know, you know, uh, argue, there are different ways of pe people, uh, how they want to profile and argue. I see many of you trying to still say, oh, you know, the levy. Forget about the levy. Let's discuss about the jobs. You know, the people who don't want the program will tell you about the levy. The people who want the program will tell you about the jobs, will tell you about the, uh, the, the, the uh, making sure that we have decent house, uh, 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 households and making sure that we have new home owners. So um, I think we are, we are past. In fact, the court uh, said we had left out some people who were not paying the levy. And I said, oh, this is good news. <laughs> Maybe we should go for those ones. So Murugara and team make sure that everybody pays. <laughs> and I'm happy that uh, tomorrow in Parliament, uh, we should be able to uh, finalize uh, in the National Assembly, let us uh, progress it to the Senate, and let us get working. Let me tell you this. We will implement the housing program. I don't want to say by whatever means possible. I have just said we will implement. <laughs> we will. Because it is what other progressive countries have done. It has worked. It is not an invention. It is what it is. You know? And even those who are opposed to the housing program, it is not because they don't know that it is the right thing. Their problem is that it is us who are implementing, not them. It is just as simple as that. That is their quarrel. In fact, uh, when I had one of our friends say yesterday, when I don't know the day yesterday or the day before, that when he sees things, he feels like crying. It is true. <laughs> because they are now wondering it was actually true that housing was possible, and we wasted time on reggae. You know? They feel like crying, because they can actually see this housing was actually possible. So that's what it is. Many people thought it was not possible. They can now see that it is possible. I want to ask us here, especially our members of parliament, to pay very special attention to some of the things we are doing. Because 
we are setting up the exam of 2027. So, mukona leakage, the exam. What you do with it is your problem. Because we are building markets in your constituencies. Um, we have close to 500 markets. We have advertised maybe two, 300. They are in your constituencies. Go ahead. I have absolutely no problem with our members of parliament going to say, I am the one who has decided that this market be built here. I have no problem. groundbreaking. I have no problem. And the yeah? Because this is your exam. This is a commitment we made to Mama Mboga, didn't we? Yes. We went to every forum. Mamboga wakatuambia tunapigwa na jua, tuko na shida, tunapigwa na mvua, atuna maali cho, atuna maji, hakuna stima, hakuna nini. So we now have an opportunity to do that. Don't let it happen without you. Wewe kazi yako ni ku inspect every week. Unatembea tembea kidogo unapitia hapo unasema sasa unakuja unaongea hapo unasema hii kazi kabisa. Eh? We have we have the county aggregation and industrial parks. Members we have the county aggregation and industrial park. It is a partnership between the counties and the national government. You have a role to play. You know? Make sure you go and inspect Kaip in your, in, your, in your county. We have now five special economic zones, six actually, including one of the biggest here in Naivasha. In Naivasha, as we committed, we're going to have a huge industrial city here in Naivasha. We have just concluded the procurement and the purchase of 5,000 additional acres here. Two Alice? Yes. Yes. 11,000 acres but 6,000 will go towards resettlement of people. So we have, uh, shortly, we will be now gazetting the necessary uh, areas. And already, we have very many companies. I was in Dubai for the, uh, up, uh, for the COP28, and we signed many agreements of people who want to come and set up here. on account of our renewable energy, on account of what Kenya looks like going into the future. Take advantage and, and, and be part of it. And it speaks to the jobs element. We're not just doing this as structures. We are doing this because jobs is important. We have to be deliberate. I was in Moranga the other day. And I hope today, I told the governor of Moranga, between today and tomorrow, we already have finished the procurement of, uh, of the, the first phase, which is going to cost us about 500 million. It's going to begin. And we, we want to push this so that we have a good environment for us to create jobs. Further down, in our fifth pillar of the Kenya Kwanza Manifesto is the digital superhighway. It is one of the most important pillars of our manifesto. I have had a discussion with the committee, ICT committee in parliament. I have had a conversation with the chair of the CDF committee. We have now changed the law. All of you uh, know that. And I want to urge members here, your first priority, 
is to make sure that you are ahead of the game in making sure that we have ICT hubs in every ward in your constituencies. You have heard me say it, and I mean it. And many of you who have done a small thing out of it, you have known that you have seen the impact, the impact it has. Jameni. Musifanye program he, ifaulu kuingine, and this is a program of your government. Because the people on the other side, sometimes they are ahead of us. They can see the opportunity clearer than we can. I want to urge every member of parliament here, listen to me, friends. You will create a thousand jobs minimum in your constituency with the ICT hub. We are, we've just concluded, we had a thorough meeting with Owalo and many of the other actors on how to deploy internet, on how we, we have already allocated money for training, on how we are going to uh, make sure that the place has power. It is up to you to make sure that you are ahead of the curve. So, members, I am talking to many people here. Motapita Mutiani, if you do what I am telling you, yeah, you, you will. You, <laughs> muta, muta, uh, we are setting up the exam for 2027. So, Mujipange. I also want to ask you, members. We have negotiated for opportunities for export of labor from Kenya. We advertised the other day for 2,500 nurses. Bore and uh, Mwadime, how many, how many, how many nurses have we, have we got so far? Imagine, we have only 500. And these are people who are going to earn 200,000 plus. <coughs> you know, <laughs> look here, guys, you know. Number one, it was, it was advertised in the press, number one. Number two, Mimi, I have been, I have talked about this thing in every meeting. In every meeting, continuously. Sasa wewe, wakata unageti kwa hiyo mkutano hivi. Unasikia president huyu anasema iko, iko, iko nurses. We ujibulizi kwa kichwa hii nurses. We, ukitoka hapo kwa hiyo mkutano. Si unaenda kutafuta mali hiyo iko nurses. Hawa nurses iko. <laughs> Friends. Because I still see people here saying we are not aware. You are not aware. Sasa mwanataka nifanya nini? Mwanataka nisimame ni wapi? Nisimame ni, 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 niweke volume kiasi gani? As we are talking today, listen, members of uh, uh, leaders, as we are talking today, Bore is here. Where is Mwadime? Or uh, that other gentleman? Yes, that Mwadime is there, the peers concerned. We still need 2,000 nurses. Nabado. Just, just wait. I am just giving you I'm, I'm just giving you the exam go look for we have an intelligent person will live here and go and do what they must do you have constituents they will take a lot of offense if they discover that there are opportunities Imetangas were everywhere and nobody has come for them. 
That is not enough. We have half a million, maybe one million, of such opportunities. It has to be deliberated. Somebody has to do some homework. I am trying to set up the bureaucracy. To my brother, to challenge Kidogo. We were uh, um, to set up both the bureaucracy in NITA and in uh, NEA to support you on making sure that you have as much information as possible. Because I have negotiated many opportunities for young people in Kenya. In fact, um, my Rosalind there uh, just came back from Germany. We are almost completing, concluding the agreement with the German government because they have asked us for 250,000 job opportunities. And they want us to conclude the agreement before June. Is that right, Rosalind? The same thing is going on with different countries. And it is important for me to talk to you, good people, so that you concentrate your energy in the right place. Concentrate your energy as a, as a people's representative. I thought we have so many people looking for jobs in our offices. There are so many. So please, let us work together because there are jobs out there. There are young people all over the place. We need to connect them to the opportunities. And please take what I am telling you seriously. You know, I am, I am not talking politics. You know, I am not talking hewa. I am talking to you reality. So, please, any serious leader will listen to what I am saying and do something about it. Because the only thing I, I find when I come to counties, what one niambia oh kuna manasia safulani, alianguka kura, tafutia kazi. Kuna mungina abo, alianguka kura, tafutia kazi. Now wa wengine wote amuzemi. Na opportunity njoi in a friends. I told you we must work together to change Kenya. Please, to Saidiane Kubadlisha Kenya. And it will take the effort of everybody. Because if we were to get 2,000 people, to Kigawana up 2,000 people, so, you no? Know, so, Saza, Munataka, Munataka to Gawane Apa. Sasa ni waulize, nani ya likatazwa kupeleka ishirini ya masalazini? Ati ya muja ambiwa? Munataka kuambiwa na nani? Kwani ya amuzomi gazeti? Na sahile mimi naongea, munafikiri mimi naongea hewa? What, what are you, sahile mimi naongea, njini munasikianga? Do you understand English or... or uh, <laughs> I mean, friends, I mean, wewe, waluke. Si mimi nilikuwa bungoma. Ulisikia mimi nikisema huku sikia. Sasa, ulikuwa nafikiri, wewe, eh. <laughs> Murithania, you heard me, I was in your constituency. Nilisema ama siku sema. <laughs> so, I mean, surely, friends, you know, to watch ye maneno ya, you know, we, we like looking for excuses. Yes, wamaua. Si mimi nilikuwa maragwa, my dear. Uh -huh. Iyo maneno yote nimesema, papa, sinilisema. In public. 
ukiwa hapo sasa please I have been everywhere I have gone I have not hidden So anyway I am not accusing anybody but I am telling you guys let us 